Hello, I'm Denshi. Now, if you watch my channel, you probably know about Manjaro Linux. It's essentially just Arch Linux, but with more stable repositories and such. And many people who don't like Manjaro go out there and say, oh, it's bloated. The only reason they say that is because the Calamari's installer, which comes with the graphical versions, like the versions of Manjaro, the ISOs that come with desktop environments, basically just installs a bunch of stuff that they decide. If you've ever installed Arch, you know the benefits of custom installing everything, of sitting there and choosing what packages you want, you know, base, all that stuff, and, and doing all that. And uh, essentially, Manjaro being Arch has that option. People don't know about, I don't know why people rarely mention this, mostly because when people become Manjaro power users, they just switch to Arch. But the thing is, you can install Manjaro the command line interface way if you wish to, which is what I'm going over in this video how to install Manjaro like Arch, so you get a minimal install. It's slightly more bloated than like uh, March, but only a little bit, not too bloated. It's basically the same thing. And you get the more stable repositories and just get all the benefits of running Manjaro, but with all the benefits of running Arch. So the minimalist system and the custom install using this method, the command line interface. I'm not talking about Ardit Architect, although we'll be using the Architect ISO which lets you access the command line by default. We're not gonna be using the setup program, which actually is like a little text user interface that like lets you move your arrows up and down, press enter, and like select all the stuff in like a little interface as if it was a graphical interface. But that's not what we're doing. We're typing everything in and we're doing it the arch way. There's a great guide over here. This one, how to install Manjaro using CLI only written by Linux Arhus or Arhus. Uh, computer veteran coders as admin DevSecOps, so that's great. And we'll be using this guide to essentially do all of this. Anyway, we'll be looking at this later. But uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, go here and uh, scroll down on the downloads page. So here's XFCE, KDE, and uh, GTK, like GNOME, desktop environments of Manjaro. And you can find the ar the architect installer, which comes with the text, the TUI, but that does, you only access that by typing in a command. This is essentially, think of this as the Arch ISO. You get a command line interface. The only thing is that when it, when it boots up, it asks you to log in instead of automatically logging in. And um, it has this little like NeoFetch icon thing here. So that's kind of cute. But anyway, that's literally all it really is. Get Architect and you download it, you flash it onto a USB and you boot it to your system and boom, you end up with this. You boot up your system and you're here. So this is a UEFI virtual machine. I'll be setting my driver to non-free just to be sure, just I'll be, if you've ever installed Manjaro, you know to do that if you have some weird hardware. If you have weird hardware, then do that as well. But you shouldn't really have to worry about this because um, I'll be basically doing everything here. Everything I'm doing here is going to be for people who've installed Arch before. You gotta understand this kind of stuff uh, before you get into command line interface install. So press enter on here, boot. And as you can see, it's going to boot you into the actual Manjaro architect ISO. There's their virtual box logo, little UEFI thing. And uh, there we go, it's booting up into the actual system, and we're almost there, there we are. And there's the interface, just fine, just a couple of seconds away, there we are. Anyway, so to log in, you're gonna have to type in Manjaro, and then Manjaro is the password, we're gonna do sudo su, so we're in the super user, control L to clear the screen. And we're now basically, basically have a Manjaro system uh, up and running like as if it was an arch ISO, so a command line interface system. So we'll, we'll be basically referencing this guide throughout the entire video because it's a great guide, although I'll be altering various things of it. Like for example, uh, the first thing it asks you to do is to change your keyboard and stuff. That might be important actually. Load keys, and then we'll do IT because I have the Italian keyboards. Uh, if you have something else, type in something else. Uh, system CDL enable, so this is just a little daemon called uh, System D. Time sync D, which essentially just this little daemon, essentially just makes makes your time sync. And you're gonna need that if you're going to install packages or do anything internet, which is kind of required to disinstall. Uh, in terms of mirrors, uh, we we might want to go to the Manjaro mirrors Pac-Man mirrors guide, which is this one. And the Pac-Man mirrors guide, we'll have to verify everything we do, but this Pac-Man mirror guide essentially just lets you, gives you these commands that you can run to help manage your mirrors. And the Pac-Man mirrors command in of it itself is exclusive to Manjaro. Pac-Man mirrors, and I'll do minus minus fast track five, run that. 
and it will essentially go to five different countries, the five main countries that I think uh, I think it's I, don't, I think it's five random countries. I'm not sure. I think there is some kind of list that it uses, but it's essentially going to go through those countries and choose the fastest uh, ones. Just set, basically just make a database of the mirrors to use. We can test this out by doing Pac-Man minus S. So for example, let's just say we want to install Vim or something. I don't know. S Y. Well, we're going to have to update a couple of things later, but. An example would be, I don't want to install like Vim, for example, there you go, Vim. It's going to download the database, you see it's pretty quick, and, uh, well, we're going to cancel that. So as you can see, it downloaded the database is quite quick, I mean, look at the community one, that's 20 megabytes per second. We can basically be assured that these mirrors are quite fast. So note both of these, because we'll be doing a different thing now. We're going to update our keyrings. The reason we have to update our keyrings is because we need updated keyrings. Yeah, the Pac-Man will, will automatically ask you to do that. But we're going to have to, we, uh, it's, it's better to actually do it manually so you actually, actually understand. If you're having issues installing packages, it's probably because you didn't do this. And you're running on an old ISO, as I did before. I was kind of confused the first time. Uh, and then I remembered, you know, I've got to update the keyrings. But that was an arch install that I'm in general install. Anyway, so as you can see, we're updating the keyrings. You know, it will just update them. There we are. Say the keys, automatically just press enter every time it prompts you. Or just type Y, enter. But enter is sufficient. Control L to clear all this stuff from the screen, and now we can skip the trust database. We don't really need that uh, because this is a you know relatively new ISO. We don't have to worry about all that kind of stuff. And uh, now it's partitioning time. CF disk, and as you can see, we're already we have no partitions here. Free space, eight gigabytes of free space is just a little drive to demonstrate how small things can really get in Manjaro. So I'm going to create a new partition. It's going to be 300. Well, actually, yeah, 300. Uh, megabytes right and a primary partition and then I'm gonna go here and create a new partition 7.7 .7 gigabytes primary partition and then I'm gonna write all of this we'll make this bootable a bootable flag and then write all of this yes there we are now we'll uh, quit this control L and now what we want to do is uh, format everything so, by default, when you make those partitions, they're formatted to ext4, but we'll, we'll be doing that again anyway. mkfs.fat, that's the Microsoft one, uh, minus f32, dev sda1, because if we do lsplk, you'll notice dev sda1 is the 300 megabyte one. So, that dot fat minus f32 turns into fat32, which is, which is required for a UEFI system. mkfs.ext4, we're going to do that to dev SDA2, that's our root. I was already messing around with that, but you won't get that prompt when you do it. Or you might, I don't know, if you already have something on it. Anyway, uh, so that's formatted now. Uh, we can basically go through here and um, we're gonna have to create a directory. So we'll have to mount, first of all, dev SDA2 to slash MNT, that will be our mount point. MK directory, so make a directory, MNT boot. And EFI. So wait a second. First, I'll make M MNT boot and then MNT boot EFI. Whoops. And then we'll mount dev SDA1 to MNT boot EFI. Enter. There we go. That's done. So we've essentially LSBLK. We've mounted our SDA2 to slash MNT. That's our root. And we've mounted SDA1, so that would be our bootloader, just slash MNT boot EFI. So now we have that bootloader loaded there. Not the bootloader, like the bootloader partition, the UEFI partition. Anyway, base installation. This is the big boy part. This is where we actually install things. So base strap, that's the command to install packages to uh, Manjaro from your, so it actually install the base system um, from, a, from you know, a remote ISO, from an ISO, like through a USB stick or a DVD or something. Base strap, not pack strap. And we're gonna be installing base. I want base devil because that comes with commands like sudo and stuff. I could install sudo individually for a less bloated system, but base devil, you kind of need everything in base devil to actually use the AUR. So uh, yeah, we're gonna keep that. Linux, whatever the latest kernel, sorry, I need to put a space. Linux 5.6 is currently the latest quote unquote sort of like stable kernel at the moment. So I'll be installing that. Obviously, if you're watching this again in the future, use, I don't know, 5.7 or 5.8 or 5.9 or I don't know, 60 or whatever you have in the future. But 57, sorry, 56 is the one that I'm gonna be installing today. Uh, network manager, I'll go over what network manager does later, but basically we're not gonna be installing DHCP 
DHC PCD because DHC PCD is only really for wired connections. And Network Manager makes that stuff much easier. We're gonna need Grub, making it CPIO. I'm installing this, but I'm also gonna be making an F-Stub as well. If I boot MGR, and I'm also going to be installing uh, Vim. I'm gonna need that. And that's it. Now, if you want to install a graphical user interface, you might want to install like Xorg and that Xorg and Xorg server and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not gonna be installing that here, mostly because um, I'll go over desktop environments and stuff later at a different part of the installation. So press enter now and it will install all that stuff. So now we, just, we basically just wait for it to install. It will take a little bit of time. It will download them and then it will install them and it's just going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so as you can see, this is now complete and all the, everything is just downloaded and everything, all that's done. We've basically installed our actual system. So now we have to move to our system. So Manjaro ch root, so access that system, slash mnt, slash bin bash, that's because we're gonna be using bash to access our system. There you go. And we're now in Manjaro, the actual, you know, the, what we actually installed, we're in our root directory. We're going to want to edit a couple of things. So for example, console keyboard, to set the keyboard in the console, we can do that. Uh, that's not necessary. And uh, everything's already like set. We can, we can set that later once we actually get to the install system, but I'll run through it anyway. So I'll be using Vim for this. Vim, Etsy, vconsole.conf, enter. And I'll set our key map to Italy, because that's what I use right quit control l and now uh we'll go to etsy locale.gen so vim etsy locale.gen we'll scroll down all the way and then you'll reach n uh, well well I'll, i'm gonna be using nus because the united states that's what that's what i use as a language but you can choose any of these uh that one oh, sorry that's the wrong one <laughs> whoops uh uh, wait a second. That's this is the right. Uh, this is the right one that was supposed to. There you go. That one. Right. Quit. Now we'll uh, generate it. Locale. We'll actually generate the locale, and it's gonna generate. There we go. It's done. So now we'll go to locale.conf. So vim etsy locale.conf, and as you can see, it's it's already set our language and everything, so we don't really have to worry about that. Okay, so now, this is all time zone and stuff, so for me, in my case, so LNSF, uh, user, share, zone info, and then for me it's Iran, and that's gonna go to Etsy local time, which is the file that contains that, there we go, control L. Now we'll set our hardware clock. This is the same as you would do on Arch. I want to set this a UTC if you want, I don't know. Oh, sorry, HWD clock works. Whoops, HW clock. Uh, wait a second, I wrote that command wrong, whoops. Enter, there we go, that's done. Uh, now we have to set our actual system. So, echo, uh, I'll, set, I'll set my name to like Denshi Linux. There you go, that's the name of the system. And I'll essentially pipe that, well, not pipe it, but send it over to Etsy hostname. So that file will contain the word Denshi Linux, essentially telling everybody that our system's name is Denshi Linux. Now, host configuration, we don't have to worry about this because we're gonna system CTL enable, which we installed before. Net with a capital N, remember? Network manager. Network manager does everything for us in terms of networks. Now, editor equals vim, because I'm using vim, vsudo. This is the sudoers file. This essentially controls the permissions for sudoers. And what we're gonna, what we're gonna edit here is there's this wheel thing. Wheel all equals all, no password, colon all. Uncommenting this essentially makes it so Sorry, that's uh, sorry. Whoops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> sorry, this one. Uncommenting that makes it so we can run the sudo command as a regular user part of the wheel group, and.
and uh, essentially be able to execute commands as a super user and not have it reported, basically. So actually, ha actually make the sudo command work instead of not work. Anyway, network stuff, we, we already done that. Um, time sinks, from, uh, you might want to actually enable that though. System CTL, enable. System D, time sync. D, there you go. So we've enabled that daemon that syncs our time. Now we'll set our root password. And then I'll go over creating a user as well, which isn't detailed in this guide. But password, I'll set that to like, uh, I don't know, just the number one. There you go, that's the password for uh, our root account. Not exactly secure, not what I would use, but you know, it's just an example. Set it to whatever you want. Now we'll create a user. So uh, user add minus M minus G, so that's groups, wheel. Remember that, that's important because the wheel group lets us actually run commands. And our shell is gonna be set to bin bash. We want our shell to be bin bash, so that's bash. Press enter. Oh, whoops, uh, I think uh, that's the incorrect. Yeah, create home. Yeah, oh yeah, I wrote, I forgot to write a name, sorry. Alex, that's the name I'll personally use. Or actually, no, Denshi, there you go, enter. There you go, now that worked. I just forgot to put a name at the end of the command and it failed, so Denshi, that's the correct user. Anyway. Uh, now we'll do password denshi, so that's the name of my user. And I'll set my password to something very secure. Anyway, so that's done now. Now we'll generate our grub. So grub install, we'll actually, we'll, or, or we'll make in it cpio minus p linux 56. Or we could just do capital P if you wish, that will automatically do stuff. There we go. And that essentially is like sort of like an f-stab. We'll make an f-stab anyway. So yeah, it's doing all this stuff. Uh, I'll make an fstab as well, just because I feel like it. So the command isn't gen fstab in Manjaro, it's fstab gen actually, which is weird. fstab gen, and we set our, uh, we basically make sure it's u uh, slash mnt. So that's actually what we're making the fstab for. And that's going to go to slash mnt slash etsy fstab oh wait whoops where we're doing this from the outer system oh we can worry about that later we have to exit and do that command i'm so dumb sorry i messed that up uh grub install minus minus target equals an x86 processor 64 bit sorry no 64 bit uh, EFI, because we're using EFI, uh, sorry, EFI, minus minus EFI directory is boot EFI, we made that before, and bootloader ID is equal to grub, it will show that, no, Manjaro, okay, well I could always call it grub if I wanted to, I'll call it Manjaro, because I feel like it, anyway, it's gonna install, no errors reported, there we go, it worked. Anyway, now we have to actually configure grub. So grub.mkconfig minus o slash boot grub grub.cfg boom. So that's gonna do that. Now we can exit. We can always make our f stab. So f stab gen uh, minus u slash mnt slash mnt. Etsy, fstab. Sorry, uh, we have to pipe it to that, we have to send it to that. Not pipe it. You get the idea. We generated our fstab, basically. It's not gen fstab, just a reminder. At gen fstab isn't a command in Manjaro. It's fstab gen. Anyway, now that we're done with that, we've basically installed our system, but we might want to actually go back into the system that we installed because you might want to add some things. So, Assuming you're kind of new to this whole custom install thing, like you might have installed Arch a couple of times, then you might not know how to handle things once you've installed stuff. Now, all we've basically done here is install the command line interface. If I restart, we'll essentially be greeted with the same thing that we're seeing now, but we're gonna be in our system. And uh, we're not gonna have any kind of UI or anything. So if I, let's give the example of, um, I don't know, I want to install um, XFC or no, KDE, KDE, my favorite desktop environment, KDE. I want to install KDE. Now this gets, we can just do this from here. We can run 
Pac-Man minus S Y U. Well, actually, minus. We've already done that. So minus S. We're gonna want to install SDDM. So that's our this display desktop manager. That basically that says like login into our desktop environment. We're going to install uh, Plasma Plasma Desktop, which is the bare minimum desktop. We're gonna install console, which is the actual uh, uh, console, <laughs> you know, the, the terminal, the terminal emulator that you get in KDE. And you might actually want to install some other things, like for example, I don't know, Firefox, but we won't, we won't install it, we don't really need that. So that's all we really need to run uh, Plasma. You might want to install something like, uh, I don't know, some extra stuff like Dolphin, that's a file manager, that's kind of useful. You might want to install something like, uh, I don't know, Anything, anything else, but all of this can be done from console. As long as you have Plasma Desktop, SDDM, and console, you should be fine. And that's all we're really gonna need, okay. Uh, anyway, you can just press enter on all of these, default one, and it's gonna install, it's 1.4 gigabytes, it's sort of big, but we're just gonna let this run, and it's gonna install KDE, and then I'll run you through enabling SDDM and showing you how to do all that stuff. So this will automatically install XORG and stuff, so you don't have to worry about installing XORG, so uh, that's always great. Okay, so as you can see, that's done installing. Now all system, CTL, enable, SDDM. You're gonna have to do that, so you actually get up the desktop manager enable when you reboot. And now we're gonna exit from our change root, and we're going to reboot. And I'm also going to unplug the actual ISO as soon as we do that, so reboot, then go to devices, and unplug the ISO. There you go, force some mount. There we are, it's loading up. And so you'll notice that it's slowly loading things. So that's the F stab right there, dev SDA2, all that stuff. And here we are in our SDDM. So that was essentially a Manjaro install. So I'll just prove that it's Manjaro by running a NeoFetch command. It's loading up Plasma right there. Um, I can set up a bunch of virtual box stuff to make it, you know, big. But anyway, uh, I'll open up a console real quick here, which we installed before, if you remember. And I'll just uh, sudo pacman minus s. Sorry, we haven't set the keyboard correctly. Uh, NeoFetch, insert my password. As you can see, my super user privileges work because I set that up. And we run NeoFetch. And as you can see, we're on Manjaro Linux. How much space are we taking up? Uh, I think, wait a second, I think Dolphin got pre-installed so we can check that. We're 3.2 gigabytes free of 7.7 um, kind of gigabytes. So that's sort of, we're looking at around, um, with those 3.2 gigabytes free, around 4.5 gigabytes of install size, which is kind of really crazy small when you think about it. Now obviously you're gonna get crazy large when you try to install other things, but this is a bare Manjaro install, 4.5 gigabytes, everything. Uh, so thanks for watching my video. This was quite a long one, obviously. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you feel like it, go through this. I know there's a couple of issues with this stuff because people forget to install packages and they, get, they mess things up and such. But it's a very, very, it's a perfectly respectable way of installing Manjaro and it gets you a really bare bones system. It's a really good way to install Manjaro. And uh, so yeah, thanks for watching this video and uh, goodbye.